Today is an especially big day for the ship sale and CIG's bank account, as we see Aegis Dynamics enter the fray. Like Aegis Dynamics. Aegis Dynamics. The ship manufacturer of all the military ships in the verse join the fray. It's an even bigger day for the free fly that's now running, with 16 ships joining the fray. And we're here to tell you which ones are worth your time. When you find yourself in the lobby of the Tobin Expo Center, use the elevators at the back and this time head up to the Aegis Hall. This ship manufacturer is so large and has so many ships in the verse already that it requires an entirely separate hall for them to showcase them, with every room available. In the main Zenith Hall, also known as Hall 1, this is the order we'll be tackling them in. Perfect! Up first we have the Aegis Sabre Comet which is basically a special edition of a normal ship with different guns and a different skin. Personally, it's okay, good to fly in atmosphere, but not worth your time. On the right is its sister ship, the Aegis Sabre, or more accurately the ship it was modelled from. This is a very light fighter lacking durability, but it's still quite sleek and deadly, and pretty fun to fly in atmosphere. Overall though, there's still slightly better combat ships, so it's not worth your time. And now it's finally time to address the absolute unit sitting at the back of the room, which of course is the Aegis Reclaimer, a salvage ship in the game, which is so ridiculously large I'm going to help you get inside the ship itself. First of all, head past the turret at the back and look for the orange flashing lights and the cargo lift. Once here, pan downwards and use the interaction key to find the call elevator button. Click it and the lift will start to come down from wherever it is located inside the ship. Given its size, it has enough floors and rooms to be a fine candidate for a Call of Duty map. The Aegis Reclaimer has everything you could ever want. A cargo hold, tractor beams, salvage hold, a salvage processing room with inspection bridge, captain's quarters, crew's quarters, showers and toilets, a mess hall, docking collars, an entire room just for scanning, turrets, gravity generators, and even more. Quite honestly, we'd be hard pressed to find a ship that showcases the scale and fidelity as well as the Reclaimer does. Unfortunately, even though it's aged well in this area, it hasn't in another, and this is the double-edged sword of Star Citizen's development. As there are no working functions for scanning, tractor beams, and salvage in general, meaning this is one giant hunk of metal with no associated gameplay and as a result it's hard to recommend alongside its obvious sluggish movement. As a result this ship has earned the OK. Have fun trying hmm. to fly out of atmosphere, but just be aware that this wow factor wears off quite quickly when you realise there's nothing really to do with it. Now we can move into Hall 2, which is where the Avenger series is let hold. These are a bunch of the same ship with different variants, so we're moving through these rapidly. Here's the order we'll work through them. Yeah. Up first, the Avenger Titan, a very small starter ship, one of the most recommended amongst the community. It has a very small area for habitation where you can sleep and log out of the game, and a very small cargo area to carry a few boxes around in. It's quite fun to fly and capable of defending itself, and as a result, if you're looking to buy into Star Citizen, I heavily recommend you start here. Take it for a test run during the free. Hmm. Up next, the Avenger Stalker. This is the bounty hunter version of the ship, and there's only one considerable difference, which is in the cargo holds, there's several prisoner pods. It's a damn shame that they don't work, and bounty hunting really isn't in the game. This is not recommended. Third is the Avenger Titan Renegade. It's just a special edition of the ship with a different skin and different weapons. Nothing to see here. And finally we have the Avenger Warlock, a ship designed to just disable other ships with its EMP located in the back. Nothing too amazing going on here and we have better E warships coming up later. Not recommended. Here we have Hall 3 which we'll be tackling in this order. Perfect. First up, the Aegis Gladius, the go-to light fighter of the universe in Star Citizen. It's a dream to fly in and out of atmosphere, it's fast, nimble, packs a punch, I have to recommend flying, trying to fly this ship, it's hmm. just quite fun. Across the hall is the Aegis Valiant, sister ship to the Gladius. 
Again, it's just a different ship skin and a different loadout. Nothing special here, so if you've already thrown the Gladius, don't really bother with this one. And finally, at the back of the room, we have another giant. The Aegis Hammerhead, which is a multi-crew corvette ship, which is just decked to the brim with guns. This thing is literally turrets attached by corridors with some consideration for the crew. So on board you'll find crew quarters, a mess hall, an engine room, all the standards are there. If you can get five or six people together, this ship wreaks absolute havoc no matter where you are. Head to a station and assault it or try multiple high level bounty missions. When done right with a competent crew, this ship is sure to leave a smile on your face. And as a result, we're giving this one the hot stamp. If you do see one of these things flying around, just be just be cautious. In Hall 4, we have two ships which will be tackling from smallest to largest. Up first is the Aegis Eclipse, a very nice stealth bomber with obvious draws to real world planes. The ship's designed for one thing and one thing only, quietly and effectively blowing up other bigger ships. Before missile countermeasures got fixed recently, if you saw one of these in your rear view mirror, you were probably about to die. Regardless, this is still a very deadly ship, just don't get hit too much. I'm still going to recommend this with the hot label, because it is actually a joy to fly. Finally in this room we have the Aegis Retaliator. An old ship that's actually aged quite well except for the fact it doesn't have the modular component rooms that it's meant to have and is stuck with just torpedoes. The ship's designed to take out large capital ships, so unless one of the hammerheads is giving you trouble, there's not really any reason to fly one of these around. It does have a standard a captain's quarters, which is probably the worst in the game, crew quarters, the torpedo rooms and the engine room. As a result of it kind of being defunct, this ship's not really recommended. This brings us to the fifth and final room, home to the Vanguard series. This series of ships is again based on a multiple variant, so we'll race through these pretty fast. They all have the same basic design, with the same areas for their components. What's different is the middle section of each of the ships, so we'll tackle them in this order. <coughs> Up first we have the Vanguard Sentinel. This is the electronic warfare version of the ship, and as a result if you're looking for an e-war ship, I'd try this one out. It has the same basic habitation area as most of the Vanguard series with two beds and a toilet and storage for some of your stuff. The main middle component is what's changed with a few server racks and a station for future E-War gameplay. If you wish to try Electronic Warfare and you don't want to wait a week, then we heavily recommend you trying hmm. this one out for a bit. Up next is the Vanguard Warden. This is the base version of the ship and as a result there's nothing really special about it, it's just a pretty decent fighter. It has a bit more space in the habitation area and a different MFD console, but that doesn't really work, so moving on. Third, we have the Vanguard Hoplite. This is the dropship version of the series, and as a result, foregoes the beds that were recently included with the other models, and instead replaces them with dropship chairs and extra space for your guns. It's by no means the best dropship in the game, and the weapon racks can't actually be used, and then there's the fact there's not really a need for a dropship right now, so this ship's just... yeah. Moving on, the final ship of the day is the Aegis Vanguard Harbinger. Now this is the bomber variant of the series. It has all the same anemones as the rest of the ships except for the hoplite, except for one side of the ships reserved for the torpedo bay, which is used to take out much bigger capital class spaceships. So if you have a grudge against somebody using a hammerhead, maybe bring one of these along. We're going to recommend this one as just the base fighter because it can take a lot hmm. of damage and deal out a lot of damage at the same time. And those are the 16 Aegis ships you'll be able to fly today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And that's it for this Star Citizen focused video. We're a fairly new channel, so if you enjoyed what you saw today, please be sure to drop a like down below, comment with your thoughts, negative and positive, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more in the future, keep on doppying, and we'll see you in the next one.